Amen. All right, we're going to look at Jehovah Rapha this morning. And that's from Exodus 15, 26. And this is the verse. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt, wilt do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you. Lord, I pray that you would just bless this message. Hide me behind the cross. This is a very personal message for me. And I thank you that you are the Lord who heals. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, where do I start? This message came out of prayer. It came out of experience. And it came out of that verse. <laughs> the Lord who heals. Um, Four years ago, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. She's still with us. Amen. Last year, I got diagnosed with cancer. I'm still with us. Seems like every week we're praying for someone with cancer. I mean, every Sunday school is like, pray for so-and-so, they've got cancer. And cancer makes you think of doctors, it makes you think of medicine, hospitals, tests, and more tests, and medical bills, and more medical bills. And what else does cancer make you think of? Yeah. Every time you hear some, you get that phone call and the doctor says you've got cancer, and you're going, I'm going to die. Isn't that true? I mean... If you've had that phone call, you know what, that, what that's like. Let me tell you what else I, and, and there's so much hope and worry and fear and time, so much time spent going to the doctor. I think I got, got my, know my doctor as well as I know anybody right now. Um, surgeries and tests and more tests. I mean, they, do, they test you before and then they do the surgery, then they test you again afterwards, and it's don't leave you alone. So this verse, there we go. This verse, though spoken specifically to the nation of Israel, when God took them out of, the, out of captivity in Egypt, it's a specific promise to them, ends with the phrase, I am the Lord that heals you. And that word is actually Jehovah Rapha. It's a hyphenated word. And literally saying, God says, I am healing or I am help. God says, this is one of my names. And you say, how many of you know what Jehovah means? Just curious. If you know what Jehovah means, oh boy, get your pencils out, pens, and write it somewhere, Jehovah means I am. And when Jesus said to um, the Pharisees, he said to them, guess what he said? He said, I am that I am. He just said he was Jehovah. Do you understand that? Jesus said, I am. I can say I was and I will be, but I'm not I am. I'm not self-existing. Um, and then when he puts the word Rapha on it, Jesus is saying, I am healing. So guess what happens when Jesus shows up on earth? People get healed. I mean, everywhere Jesus went, people came and brought their sick with them, and he healed them. I mean, I, I can't imagine, I mean, if Jesus were to walk into Waterloo, I've got a list, right? Would you heal this and this and this and this, starting at my feet and stopping with that? You know, there's a lot of me broken. I could use some help. 
and do you know what um, it says in Matthew 9, 12, it says, Jesus says, I am the physician. They that are whole do not need a physician, but he's saying, I'm the one, I'm the physician. He actually uses that word. I love that. And all through the New Testament, Jesus went around healing people. I mean, just that's what he did. In Luke chapter 6, it says great multitudes. I don't know how many of that is, but 50,000 people? I don't know, 30,000, 20, 10? Great multitudes of people came to him to be healed, and it says he healed them all. There's actually speculation in Christian educated circles that there were almost no sick people in Palestine by the time Jesus was done. Isn't that amazing? When Jesus comes back, do you know what? He'll do the same. So here's the real question. Does Jesus heal today? Right? And does he do it all the time? And why not now? And why do I have to go to the doctor if Jesus heals? And I mean, I would have loved to Jesus when, when I got the phone call and I said, Lord, heal me. And, and go to the doctor the next time. I'm going to be honest with you, I actually was hoping when they did the next test, they'd go, it's gone. I was hoping for that. I would have loved it. <laughs> you know, um, by the way, we Christians believe that Jesus is the healer. How many of you would say, I believe that? Yeah, I believe he's the healer. But guess what? We don't really believe it. Would you agree with that? We believe and don't believe. I've, this tension, this struggle of being a Christian who believes, but not seeing what you want. There are mornings you get up and go, I'm not sure God's even real. Have you ever been there? Or if, if he's really real, I'm not sure it's worth it. Because he's not doing anything. We so, 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 I mean, I've been there. Been there this week. One of my favorite Bible verses, there we go, is the one we read, where it says, Bless the Lord who heals all of your diseases. And then, I mean, is there a disease he can't heal? As he says, he forgives all my iniquities and he heals all my diseases. Let me, let me add this to this. Does Jesus forgive every kind of sin and all sin? Is there any sin not forgivable by Jesus? No. In the same way, is there any disease that Jesus can't heal? No. <laughs> I mean, he forgives sins, he heals diseases. And I, let me tell you this, I know that there are days when I can't imagine Jesus forgiving me for one more sin, let alone, I, he just had it. He's got to have had it with me. I know he's had it with me. I'm disgusting in my eyes. But he says, I forgive. And on the same level, Jesus heals diseases. Now, before I go on, I want to tell you something about Jesus and healing. Healing will only be complete in the resurrection. Jesus died and rose again to die no more. Lazarus died, was risen from the dead. Jesus, after three days, Jesus called him out of the grave. And guess what happened to Lazarus a few years later? He died again. By the way, I think, I think Lazarus says, yeah, Jesus heals. I mean, he sure did know that. The blind man in John chapter 9, he healed me. I mean, he knew it. <clears throat> but Jesus doesn't always heal in the present moment. There we go. Next slide. Not working well. There you go. 
This is, a, this is a chorus from a song by Mercy Me. How many of you know the group Mercy Me? The lead singer, I think this song was written about his child having cancer. I'm, if it's working right up here. And he, this is a chorus. I know you are able. I do. I know you can. You can save through the fire with your mighty hand. But this is the hard line. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Can you, can you go there when you're sick? Um, the says, I know that the hurt would all go away if you just say the word. Just a word, and Jesus could make it all better. And I believe that Jesus can, personally. I believe he can. And I know that he would when he knows that would is the best thing for me. You got that? I know that he would when, I, when he knows, not I know, that the best thing for me is yes. But when he says no, why would he say that? Because he knows the best thing for me is no. Does that take faith? I think so. Um, I, I love these words. How many of you know who A.B. Simpson is? Anybody? He's a Pentecostal preacher in Canada, and he wrote this. I love this poem. It's just part of it. It starts with, once it was the blessing. The idea is, once I wanted the blessing, now I want the Lord. Once it was that great feeling that I got at church one day, now it is his word that I want. Once his gifts I wanted, but now I want to own the giver. Once I sought for healing, now I've changed what I want. Do I just want the healer? It takes a lot to get from I'm sick to saying I just want Jesus. So let me ask you a question. What can the Lord heal us from? Well, here's some, this is just from Bible. In Exodus 15, the context of Jesus, uh, the Jehovah saying, I'm the healer, guess what he healed in the previous verses? Anybody know? I'm just curious. I'm, the reason I keep asking these questions, I want you to read your Bible enough so you can say, I know, Pastor. <laughs> they went, this is after they crossed the Red Sea, the Egyptians are dead. They're celebrating. They ran out. They had no water. They found water. It was poisonous. And Jesus healed the water. Poison is bitterness. Do you know that Jesus heals bitterness? I watched it happen with somebody this week. Someone who had every reason in the world to be full of bitterness reached out in love to those that hurt them. I thought, God, you're a man. I mean, that morning, I had had a morning where I said, God, this is this day. It is not worth it. I'm not getting up. I'm not serving you today. I'm not visiting that couple, and I'm not visiting this couple. And then Jesus showed up and healed someone's bitterness. He heals physical ailments. You know that Exodus 41, 3, 3 says this, the Lord will strengthen thee, I mean, Psalm 41, 3 says this, the Lord will give you strength upon the bed of languishing. God will make all my bed when I'm sick. One of my favorite, okay, think of this. I know when my bed needs to be made when I'm sick, it's because I've made a mess, right? And God says, I'll make all my physical ailments, God's willing to get his hands into the mess to take care of me. It says in Psalm 102, verse, the title of the psalm, I love this title. Listen to this. A prayer of the afflicted when he is overwhelmed and pours out his complaint before the Lord. Been there? 
God, I've had enough. I quit. Well, God heals depression and discouragement, affliction. I've been there. How about this one? By the way, that overwhelmed thing, do you know that Jesus was overwhelmed in the Garden of Gethsemane? So much so that it said that God had the Father sent an angel to strengthen him. I just, if Jesus needed that kind of help, guess what? Me too. Me too. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with thee. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Peace. How many of you have anxiety and worry? Ever, <laughs> right? Jesus has healing for anxiety and worry. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <sighs> Such a great verse. Jesus can answer, he's the answer for fear. 2 Timothy chapter two, 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. You know what a sound mind is? Mind is? It's what I don't usually have. <laughs> a little bit goofy, unstable, mental illness. You know, there was a man, in, um, Jesus in a boat, and they come over to um, Gadarens, and there's a man in the tombs that's demon-possessed, and Jesus heals him, and the people in the village come and look at the man, and they, it says this, they saw him sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. You know you can't really be crazy when you're sitting at Jesus' feet? I mean, I'm, I don't even know how that works sometimes, but I know that if Jesus is, if I'm sitting there and he's got my hand and, and he's saying, David, it's okay. I'm okay. How about this one? And God heals my sin and my brokenness. All that's wrong with me spiritually. Who forgives all your iniquities? In Romans 7, the Apostle Paul is finishes, he looks at himself and says, I can't do the right thing no matter how much I want to, and I can't stop doing the wrong thing no matter how much I want to. Read Romans 7, it's what Paul said. And he gets to the point where he says in verse 25, Oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You know what he says next, though? I know, I'm glad you didn't stop right there. Because he basically just said, this is a hopeless mess. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Jesus heals sin messes. You know, I, I, I have to add this. I am going to end my life someday in God's presence. Perfect in every way. Fully accepted. I can't picture it. I mean, he heals. There is not a need, a sin, or illness, a brokenness that Jesus cannot heal. Not one. And he wants to heal. I love it. The man comes to Jesus and he says, if you will. And Jesus says, I will. And he's willing in his time, key phrase, to finish the work that he has started in healing you and I. Isn't that great news? He, in Timothy, Paul says, faithful is he that called you who will finish that which he started. Thank you, Lord. So how does Jesus accomplish this? Oh, next slide there. Not, there we go. Well, let me tell you how he accomplishes it. Jesus bears my sin, my sickness, 
my brokenness upon himself. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24 says, Jesus, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being right now dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. In other words, every blow on Jesus brought healing to me. Every one of them. Listen, Jesus came, it says in um, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Jesus became sin for you and I so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Isn't that incredible? In other words, I have hope because Jesus heals. And by the way, healing costs Jesus everything. My healing cost him everything. I mean, I go to the doctor and it costs me everything. <laughs> but he pays. He pays. So here, let me just take a quick look at Isaiah 53. This is all about Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of so sorrows and personally acquainted with grief. That is, he experienced the grief you experience. He knows grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. We turned away from him. We turned our back on him. He knows betrayal. And he was despised, and we valued him not, esteemed him not. We, didn't, we just despised him. And so guess how he looks at us? When, when we look at him with, by the way, I, I got to explain this a little bit. At the cross, when Jesus was crucified, everybody left him. That's despising him. Do you understand that? It may not, you may not think that, but not standing with him is to despise him. He wasn't worth standing with. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Every pain and sorrow, he carried it. Yet we esteemed or valued him not. I'll be honest with you, I wonder if I value him enough now. Right? What he has done for me, what value do I put on it? But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Iniquities being everything that's wrong with me. Brokenness, twisted, bent. Everything that was wrong in me, when it says he was wounded for my, bruised for my iniquities, everything that was wrong in me bruised him. You get that? It left a mark on him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. All that means is when I sinned, he took the punishment, and I've got peace. I don't get it. I don't get the chastisement, the correction that I deserve. He took it. I have peace. I, put it this way. I sin, and he suffers, and I have peace with God. And with his stripes we are healed. Next slide. All we like sheep have gone astray. And with, and we have turned every one of us to his own way. In other words, I did what I wanted to do, like a dumb sheep. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that's what, we're to sing the song, My sins they are many. His mercy is more. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shearers is mute, dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? 
For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. He identifies with the worst people and with the rich in his death because he hath done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. In other words, he didn't deserve it. Yet it pleased the Lord God Father to bruise him. I just this amazing verse. He hath put Jesus to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, Jesus shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Let me explain that to you. You and I are his seed. If you believed in Jesus Christ, you're his seed. You're born again. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Even though his days were cut short by death, he lives forever. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see the travail of his soul <laughs> and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. He shall bear their iniquities. I love the fact Jesus can now look at me and he's satisfied. Let me ask you a question. When you look at me, are you satisfied? Don't answer. Right? Well, he's satisfied with me because of what he did. Next slide, please. See, Jesus knows. It says, by his knowledge, he knows. He doesn't know about. He knows what it's like to be me. See, he doesn't just know about sin and suffering and struggles. He knows it intimately. If you go to a doctor, they may know a lot about cancer, but unless they've had cancer, they don't know cancer. Does that make sense? Well, Jesus knows sin and suffering. And Jesus is the great physician. <laughs> and, he, and he can heal you and I from every disease we've got because he knows disease and sin, and he's won. Do you understand? When he rose from the dead, he had won. The whole thing was conquered. Apostle, Apostle John calls us overcomers because we believe that. We win too. So here's the question. And I know how people think. Some people will not go to the doctor no matter how sick they are. Anybody know anybody like that? Don't raise your hand. Yeah. You understand? Well, Jesus says, come to me. And are we coming? I mean, if we believe, do we go to him? Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. That is the invitation today. It's what we're going to approach communion with. Jesus is saying, come unto me. My body was broken for you so that you might be whole. Lord, I pray that you take this message and help us long for your healing, for your presence, for all that it means to have you with us. Thank you that you're gentle and kind to broken sinners like me. I pray that you'd bless our, our communion, that we would celebrate the, the life we have in Christ and with each other. In Jesus' name, amen.